Welcome back to the channel. I am here on the Fiori Launchpad and to create a new product in SAP s using Fiori, we will navigate to the application called Manage Product Master Data. Click on this application and here you can see the start screen to manage our product master data. We will now click on Create and a little pop-up screen opened. Over here, we will now go through the most important fields. So here you can see product number, where we could state the new number for the product, but only if the number range assigned to our product type over here is set to external. Otherwise, we will just select the product type. So let me open the search help. And over here, you can see many different product types. We will just say raw materials for now. Then we must insert a base unit, let's say pieces. And then you can see here other indicators such as the product group, the GTIN, which is the global trade item number to identify our product globally through the supply chain. Also, we can select here reference product so that most of the fields will be copied from our reference to save time. And we must insert a description. Let's just say screw for now. Then we click on OK and we are forwarded to a detailed screen. I will now go through the different tabs you see over here and explain you some of the details. First of all, we are here in the general information section where we could insert basic data such as the division, which is nothing else than a product line or a specific business area within our company from the perspective of the materials management. Let me open the search help. Here you can see product division 00 and 01 my system. However, you could create multiple more of those divisions to classify your products. Then there is a free text field for an old product number. So for instance, if we migrate it our materials into a new system, we could insert here the number the material was stored in our old system to have a connection. Then we have the batch management required indicator. So whether this product should be managed in batches and the batch management is used to manage and track our material in lots of batches throughout the supply chain to ensure both quality control and also the traceability of our product. You can click here on show more. Now, new sections opened where we could insert sizes and dimensions as well as things like an authorization group to secure this product so that only authorized personnel could view it. We have a section for the quality management so that the quality management for this product could be enabled. Then we have the different descriptions of our product that could be maintained in different languages. Then the GTIN information I talked about before and even here we can click on show more. So now that you could insert weight and dimension as well as volume information. So far so good, let's scroll down. We have the unit of measure, so we can store this product here in different units of measures via the create button if necessary. The product group, which can be used to classify similar products for planning, reporting and also analysis purposes, whether this product is compliance relevant or even if the product consists of many different components if we should classify the product and then we have some purchasing information that we could enter as well as sales information. All of those information will then be populated when we create for instance a purchase order or a sales order. Let's go further down. Here we can see storage information that we could fill. This is then used on the lower hierarchy level so to say. So within a plant we have different storage locations I already explained you this in another video of mine. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. However, here we could include some more storage information for our product, such as the storage conditions, or also temperature information for the product, and even if this product is a dangerous one that should be separated from non-dangerous products. Then you can see here the shelf life information, meaning that we could specify the duration of time that this product remains usable, sellable or also safe for consumption. This is in particular important in industries such as pharmaceuticals, food and beverages or chemicals. We could include warehouse management information, but this is an advanced topic. The warehouse management is a separate module in SAP. Also, we can include packaging information such as the handling unit type. Let me open the search help. Here you can see that we could specify how this product should be handled. So which specific pellet to use for this product as well as the maximum capacity. So the maximum quantity 
of our product that can be stored in a specific storage location or a bin within our warehouse and even if an overcapacity tolerance is allowed. Here you can include the packaging information and we can assign over here a warehouse to our product if necessary. There is even a section for extended service parts planning, which is an advanced solution designed to manage the planning and also the optimization of service parts in industries relying heavily on the after sales services such as our automotive, aerospace or electronic industries. And the information included in this section will then help us to ensure the availability of spare parts and also to manage inventory levels and optimize the entire supply chain for our service parts. Then we have a section for distribution chains used to manage the flow and also the availability of our materials across different organizational units especially in the context of our sales and distribution. And most importantly, we have the plans information. So now we will click on create to create our product in a specific plant. We need to insert the plant itself and then we can include a profit center, also serial number information. Let's go to the configuration tab. Here we could specify whether this product should be configurable, so meaning that it can be customized according to specific requirements or preferences of our customer. In the international trade section, we can include international trade information, such as the country of origin and also taxes. We have a section for the sales, such as the loading group, so how products are loaded and handled during the delivery process for instance by crane, forklift or manual. And also we have the availability check, which is even mandatory. So meaning that when we create a sales order, the system will check whether or not the required quantity of our product is even available in our stock. Let's go to the quality management section. Here we could insert some quality management information on a plant level, such as that if we post to this product in the plant 1010 later on, the stock will first go into an inspection before it is posted to the unreleased stock and can be used further. This is particularly important, for instance, in the food and beverages or pharmaceutical industry to ensure high quality products will be processed further. Let's go to the purchasing tab. There's also a subsection for the procurement data and also for the inspection setup. Then we have the purchasing tab where we can include a purchasing group and a tax indicator if necessary. We can also state that automatic purchase orders should be allowed, meaning that out of our purchase requisitions, automatically purchase orders can be generated. And we could even state that a source list is required, so meaning that if we hit this indicator, then for our product in this specific plant, a source list must be maintained. By the way, I have another video explaining you the source list. I will leave you a link in the description of this one. Let's go to MRP data. Here we must include at least an MRP type, which will determine how and when materials are planned and also replenished. So this will define the specific planning strategy and also the approaches that SAP uses to manage our inventory levels, our production planning and procurement processes. For now we won't include any planning. However, if you include a planning strategy, then you can assign an MRP controller as well as certain indicators and strategies and for instance, quite important, a reorder point, meaning that if I insert 200, as an example, then the system will reorder the product up until 200 pieces are in stock again. We can even include a planning cycle to determine the planning of our material further. Here in this MRP data section, you can see we have many different subsections. So we can insert lot size data to handle the materials in different lots. We can include procurement information, such as the special procurement type. So whether we have, for instance, a consignment or subcontracting process, both of them I explained to you already in other videos. I will leave you the links in the description of this one. We can also include a planned delivery time for this product, let's say five business days, and we can include a product storage location. So the product will be stored in a specific location within our plant. For repetitive manufacturing, we have an indicator to enable it. By the way, the repetitive manufacturing is a production method designed for manufacturing high volumes of our product, where the production process is continuous or occurs in repetitive patterns. We have the MRP areas, which is used in materials requirement planning to manage and also control our material planning 
and inventory within a specific area or segment of our plant. For now we will leave it blank, we can insert MRP texts and then we come to the advanced planning section. Here we could enable the advanced planning. The advanced planning itself is a sophisticated planning technique used to enhance the standard material planning and procurement process. This is something requiring additional licenses by SAP. We have a lot of sections for the advanced planning, I will skip them for now and we go to the extended service parts planning. This section we have seen before, not on the plant level but on the client level. So as said, here you could include more information for service parts planning, especially important for industries heavily relying on the after sales market. We have a forecasting section where we could include information to predict future demand for our product based on historical data and also trends. Then we have a section for the storage location where we could include a cycle counting indicator which is used to manage and also control our inventory verification process. So the cycle counting is nothing else than a method of regularly checking a subset of inventory items rather than performing a full physical inventory count. Here we could include a storage location, let's click on create storage location and that's basically it. And we have a costing section with the costing lot size where we could include the lot size of our product for costing purposes. For now we'll click on apply and we are back in the overview screen. Let's now go to valuation areas. Here we can now include a valuation area for our product which is used for the financial perspective. Let's click on create. We must include a valuation area which is the linkage to our financial accounting. By the way, I have another video explaining you this in more detail. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. We will just include the valuation area and then we have the valuation class for raw materials. And here we can now say whether we want the price control determination to be single multi-level or transaction based. Then we have the price control determination, either it's single multi-level or transaction based. And this is used to determine the periodic unit price for our material. Let's go down a bit. Here you can see that we can include the valuation information such as the inventory price depending on our currency type and ledger combination. And this here stems from the material ledger. I've shown you the activation of the material ledger in another video. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. The future price we can include and also other prices. For now this is fine. We can click on apply. Now we are back in the overview screen. We can insert some text information as well as include attachments if necessary. Yeah, and that's basically it. Now we can click on create to create our new product. We get a warning message that potential duplicates exist. However, we will click on create. And you can see our product 2378 was created successfully. This marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.